it, I think the mic is on. Okay. Can everybody hear? Okay. Good morning. Welcome to this town hall. I am thrilled that there's so many people here. We have been eager to share with you the updates on the construction plan on our campus development thing that we've been working on for over two years. Uh, it's not a smooth road, and, I want to, and you know that. I'm sure you've been hearing little rumors and you've been speculating. And we'd like to put an end to speculation <laughs> and give you what we know and the whole of what we know, because we are dedicated and committed to transparency in this process. I'd like to start the process by asking you to read out loud our covenant with one another and to conduct our meeting within the context of that covenant so that when we have questions, we ask them consistent with the covenant. Can we do that, please? Okay. As part of the beloved BUC community, I promise to strive to be my best self in all my interactions, assume the best intentions of everyone's actions, be mindful of our shared humanity in my communications, pause, reflect, and be part of the solution when things go awry. Thus do we covenant with one another. Uh, most of the members of the board are here this morning and most of the members of the CDPC are here this morning. So that if you have questions after the meeting is over that you'd like to ask of one person or another, please feel free to do that. We'll hang around a little bit so that you can do that. I'd like to ask you to remember that the people who have been working on this project have been working very diligently and with the best interests of BUC in mind. So things from the outer world don't always fit into our plans or fit into what we've been told we can expect. So unexpected things come along. I believe that we are a very practical community and that we will adapt ourselves to what we need to adapt ourselves to. So as you listen to the, uh, to the information that Dick has for you this morning, I'd ask you to listen with a generosity of spirit and a generosity of heart that recognizes that the people who are doing this work are doing it on your behalf and have been doing it very diligently and have been working very hard. So Dick. I think I just turned the whole thing off. <laughs> Am I on? Am I on? Okay. Thanks, Lisa, and when we get to the Q&A, you don't have to throw all softballs. You can <laughs> feel, free, feel, feel free to express yourselves. Um, before I get into the campus development part of this, I wanted to keep the treasurer hat on for just a quick couple of minutes. Uh, what we're going to cover today are a quick financial update because there was a lot of anxiety going into this year about our financial condition and where we stand. We're at the six month mark, so I have a chance to give you an update of where, just a real broad brush of where we stand. Then we'll get into the campus development update, original budget forecast, and our current bid costs, which are wildly different and uh, what kind of scope corrections we're going to make, uh, the path that we're currently on, and what those scope corrections mean in terms of what's going to happen with the budget and the schedule as we see it now. Um, so, if you flip the next slide. The uh, start of the year was, was a pretty anxiety producing one. We were behind on last year's pledge collections, we were behind on this year's pledge collections, and uh, the circumstances in our f financial structure and department, the way things were being handled, were, were pretty chaotic. And, and I gotta really give a nod to Eric and Annette Sargent and to Kathy Hurt for the hours and hours and hours of follow-up to get the pledges collected. And um, 
uh, uh, there's no reason really to, to, to knock the congregation about being slow on it because we had a lot of misinformation. We had a difficult year. Uh, we ran a capital campaign. We went to, we changed to a fiscal year. And um, our finance department was really, the follow-up wasn't there and that sort of thing. And ultimately, uh, it, uh, uh, everybody rolled up their sleeves involved in collecting the pledges and putting things together. And so where we are now, and um, I got to give Jim Shettle, Lisa Crawford, and Joanne Copeland, and if you get a chance to thank them, uh, they stepped into, when we reorganized our, our financial structure, they stepped into a really tangled situation. Uh, it, it was a mess. They, uh, we went through an audit, which uh, turned out good. Uh, they pull, pulled together new software, uh, had a software change, and in the restructuring, in less than 90 days, they have uh, the, f the finance end of our uh, church operations in the, in the best shape that I've ever seen them in the five years that, that uh, I've been here, and I'll bet for a whole lot longer than that. So I uh, thank them when you have a chance. Um, pledge income at this point, first of all, last year, thank you congregation, we balanced the budget when the pledges finally got in. There was, I know there was a lot of confusion um, on people's part about what they'd paid and what they hadn't paid and was it to the capital campaign or was it for their pledges and so on and so on and so on and so forth and that all got detangled. Um, so our pledge income for the first six months year to date is 249000 versus a budget of 231000 so 18, we're headed in the right direction on pledges. Uh, other income and expenses, I didn't break them out all separately because there's some designated stuff, and, but the net of it is that between other income and expenses, we're $10,000 better than budget. Our operating income for the first six months is $24,000 versus a budget of a $4,000 loss. So we're running $28,000 ahead. Um, our we went into the year not wanting to cut programs and, and not wanting to, to make willy-nilly cuts before we really knew what was happening. And so we budgeted an $18,000 loss. As a board, we accepted that to stay where we thought we needed to be. And if we can just basically hang on and break even for the rest of the year, we'll do better than that. So. Uh, Again, I know there was a lot of anxiety, and I wanted to, to say that uh, you've got a great staff in that office, and, and we're, in, uh, we're headed in pretty good shape. So, yeah. On top of that, it's, it's, this, is not a, uh, this is not a fiscal year thing, it's a calendar year thing, but uh, we have uh, 23 new members signed the book in 2015, and seven members who were on inactive status reactivated. So we, obviously we lost a number of people, but we had 30 people <laughs> added on. So anyway. For the next slide, uh, if you'll recall, we were at a budget of 1.9 million, including a $400,000 mortgage, and the one and a half million, uh, we raised 1.4 and change in the capital campaign. And um, there was some additional funds available from uh, um, a HOTUS bequest for landscaping that we put into use and so on. So at any rate, uh, the $1.9 million budget, which was determined initially by our uh, architect and construction, primarily our construction, management fund as the budget and uh, as you know the, the congregation voted on a $400,000 mortgage. So next slide, we got the bids in December and the actual bid cost was a half a million dollars over the estimate. Next slide. <laughs> Why do we have such a horrendous increase? And I'm going to do this from the bottom up. There are a lot of factors. There are some site changes that the city of Bloomfield Hills is going to require of us. They want the pond dug out and cleaned out. Uh, they want a dumpster screen. They want some additional landscaping around the parking lot and some parking lot changes. And these are the, the planning commission, I don't want to get too deeply in this, but the planning commission has new powers and they're exercising them. Uh, and uh, they want a lot of things done outside. Additionally, uh, there were some unexpected additional costs for some, from some unexpected foundation issues. We'll lay that on the, the, the uh, uh, on McCarthy and Smith, and it was discovered that we're going to need some firewalls uh, when we do any kind of reconstruction, uh, and those added up to sixty thousand dollars. <coughs> The 
there were more challenges and complexity in the existing building and site, especially on the north end, and when contractors saw what they had to do, I think they bid defensively. But over and above, far and away, the most important factor was where we are in our construction cycle. If you've read the Free Press, there are thousands of apartments and condos being built and rehabbed in Detroit. Uh, the, const the construction, folks in the construction industry are incredibly busy and they can pick and choose what jobs they want and uh, and again they're bidding they're, they're making back the margins they lost from 2008 to 2012 so those are the reasons and that that we added up to the five hundred thousand dollars so obviously course corrections are required uh, the CDPC and, and our BUC architects who've been a great help uh, use these filters just like we have from the start what course corrections would still meet our needs uh, the needs that we've been expressing all the way along what cor course correction will support and keep our values especially the one of, ex uh, of accessibility that was the most most mentioned and most supported change uh, in, uh, in the construction products project. And again, what's within our means? What can we do? So where we are at this point, and it's a fluid process at this point, this is where we are now. The course corrections that were headed down to reduce costs that were determined by our folks in conjunction with our, our uh, construction manager and architect are to, uh, to make a simpler, more modest exterior entry and vestibule without the folded metal and, and those kinds of things. Simpler lobby, lobby roof without the clerestory windows and to remodel the existing colored door rooms, but don't put in an interior passageway or a room addition in the north end of the project. And I'll show you some schematics in a minute. Those changes uh, would reduce our projected costs as our construction manager estimates them by $650,000 from the 2.4 million. The outcomes that don't change, all the items that originally were deemed urgent and essential are done still. And we are still wheelchair uh, accessible from the front entry to the sanctuary and on through to the color door rooms, but the, but the wheelchair accessibility into the color door rooms would be exterior at this point as opposed to interior. And other enhancements that we can afford will be done, including the remediation, remediation of the pond and additional landscaping requirements by the city. So, I'll take a break as we get into this one. Um, the bid design, if, I, I didn't put the exterior one up, but if you remember, we had barrier-free universal access from the front door all the way to the sanctuary and on through. A bold, expanded, and it really did make a statement, the entry with, with clerestory windows in the uh, in the lobby and these open casual uh, gathering areas with built-in benches and configurable furniture. So that's the bid design. The next slide is the, end, the course correction design. See if I can do this. We would still have barrier-free entry starting at the front door. This is all going to be reconfigured by the architect. Uh, and we'll have, we won't have these crazy angles and that sort of thing, and it'll be a much more modest entryway and lobby, but still pulled out to this extent so that someone can walk in uh, or come in in a wheelchair uh, or have other mobility issues and be able to make it from the front entrance with a 1 in 20 slope through this area to a landing and on down through the gallery to the pavilion and on into the sanctuary. And then the, the, this, this basically, except for the removal of the clerestory windows and some changes in the roof, um, it remains the same. And this will change significantly, but really within the, the envelope that we've got here. So that's the current plan. We keep barrier-free universal access. Uh, you will notice the word bold is removed from expanded entry. <laughs> and we'll keep the, keep the lobby pretty much as it is. Next one. The classrooms, this is uh, the bid design. 
where we were coming from the pavilion and tearing out the furnace rooms and the restrooms and in the, those spaces where the furnace rooms and the restrooms were creating an interior corridor to get to all of the rooms. So inter interior connecting ha hallway, barrier free universal access, a new area, a building on the north that would house the bathrooms that were restrooms that were removed and then refreshing uh, and uh, remodeling all the classrooms. So if you could go to the next one, Jim, or whomever is doing that. No, it's not you. Barb? The course correction goes back to the original design. The access is by sloped concrete on the exterior. Uh, we have remodeled the existing bathrooms, including new fixtures and new finishes, and upgrade those. We'll, we'll look to upgrade the HVAC. Uh, the green door room and the red door room do not currently have a, um, air conditioning. We'll work on that. And the classrooms are accessible through the courtyard uh, ramp. So uh, this becomes a remodeling project as opposed to um, uh, remodeling what's there as opposed to adding and making new things. Next one, um, bid design, uh, additional scope that's still there, the parking lot, refreshing the social hall, uh, refurbishing the, the commons connector, and re remodeling uh, bathrooms elsewhere on the cam comp campus. Uh, revised, we're, doing, we'll, we're still doing all those things. Uh, the, uh, we're repurposing the, the classrooms on the lower level, which really isn't a remodeling exercise. It's not a money exercise. But the, um, um, as you know, the, uh, I'm sure the uh, preschool is closing and that frees up over 1,100 square feet of additional space for the church's use for rentals or programs. Uh, in addition, we're going to have to do some site improvements, as we mentioned, the pond and, and uh, so on for the city of Bloomfield Hills. The result of the course corrections are that our new target, and I'm going to emphasize the word target because this is a fluid situation, is that we, we believe based on the, um, I should say our construction manager believes based on the changes that I just outlined that uh, we, would, we would hit a number around 1.75 million. So our new target then for the mortgage would be 250,000. The effective uh, change on the schedule, again, as we are currently uh, working on it, and both the architect and the construction manager are working, working hard to pull this together. And we'll have another meeting in February, probably not too deeply into February, where we have sketches from the architect and we can have another town hall to, to see it fleshed out as opposed to just in words. Um, rather than starting in April, uh, we would be starting in June. We were going to start at April 25th, I think. It would be moved to June. And our finish would be in November versus October currently, versus the end of October. Campus development funding, this is just an example. Uh, if we did have a 250, if we do end up with a $250,000 conventional mortgage with a 25 year AM, um, I left off the 4%, although I think it'll be closer to that, but 5 and 6% are principal and interest uh, payments. On that size mortgage would be um, between 14 and $1,600. Um, the sources of funds from operation, the elimination of the preschool expense, we were subsidizing essentially the operation of the preschool uh, in the hopes that it would, uh, that it would uh, become a profit-making operation. It, it didn't work out, but that, is, that expense that we, we had, uh, that burden that we had uh, economically is, is re relieved. And we expect to increase rental revenues. If, if we do end up with a $250,000 mortgage, simply closing the preschool provides more source of funds than we need to do that. If we went to add to a four, if we ultimately ended up with a $400,000 mortgage, for example, say, we would probably need some additional increased revenues from rentals, which Jim, Jim will guarantee. We'd, 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 we're not going to need, we, in the original communications, we said we would, we would put some energy cost savings towards a mortgage and reduce cost of repair and maintenance and that sort of thing, but um, we won't be needing, even with a $400,000 mortgage, uh, we won't be needing that. So, I want to, 
I'm just about to the end of this. I wanted to, if you all remember this original brochure uh, for the capital campaign in 2014 where, I de where we identified what repairs are urgent, what repairs are essential, what might we like to do in the future to enhance and so on and so forth. Um, we identified you can't really see this very well, but we identified the urgent repairs were estimated to cost uh, $300,000, the essential repairs $1.1 million for a total of $1.4, and then we had $200,000 as an estimate for architectural expenses, and that's how we came up with the $1.6 million as a budget for the uh, as a budget for the project or an estimate for the project. The urgent and essential repairs are all still done. The means that we have are still at 1.6 million. We are at 1.75 million as our current estimate, doing all of those things and adding accessibility to the church that none of us knew that we could do. So, we're all disappointed, but what mostly happened in this journey with the architect and so on was that our expectations climbed way up into the stratosphere. And now we're back down to uh, pretty close to... I, if we had said the project isn't going to cost 1.6, it's going to cost 1.75 if that's where we ended up. But you can have universal or barrier free access through the church. I think we would have taken that deal. So I'm disappointed. We're all disappointed that uh, we're having to give up some of the some of the pizzazz of this project, but um, it isn't all bad news either. This is uh, where we are. So with that, I'll open it to questions. And we've got some. <laughs>